In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is among us. My beloved in Christ, today we turn our attention to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, the 13th Sunday of Luke, to a passage that unveils profound challenges on our journey toward Christian discipleship. We know that a rich ruler approaches Jesus seeking guidance on inheriting eternal life. He addresses Jesus as good teacher, and Jesus, of course, redirects his focus not to himself, but to God's goodness. When asked about keeping the commandments, the ruler claims to have followed them diligently. He's done them all, the teachings of Moses. However, Jesus challenges him to go beyond this mere compliance and addresses his attachment to wealth, and there's a reason. Christ emphasizes the difficulty for the wealthy to enter God's kingdom, stating it is easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than for a rich person to inherit the kingdom of God. This narrative underscores the challenges of humility, prioritizing values, and letting go of worldly material attachments to follow Christ wholeheartedly. As we dive into the Scripture, I would like to offer three challenges, simple challenges that we can take away from this beautiful gospel narrative, emulating the very character of Jesus Christ. Challenge number one, embrace humility. The rich ruler approached Jesus with a question, addressing him as good teacher. And again, as we read, Jesus redirects him to the focus from mere titles to the essence of goodness itself. No one is good except God alone. In these words, Jesus challenges us to recognize the source of all goodness, that is, God. To emulate Christ, we must cultivate humility, acknowledging that our goodness is a reflection of God's grace working within us. The challenge, the challenge is to surrender pride, recognizing our need for divine guidance and allowing the transformative power of God's goodness to scope our character, to help develop who we are as people. Challenge number one, embrace humility. Challenge number two, prioritize the kingdom or the heavenly values. You hear me touch on this often. Our goal is not to focus on the worldly things in life, but rather the heavenly. Jesus in response to the ruler's inquiry about eternal life, directs him to the commandments. The rich ruler asserts his adherence to these moral guidelines, yet Jesus, perceiving the deeper struggle within, challenges him once again to go beyond. Christ's words highlight the importance of actively living out kingdom or the heavenly values here on earth. Emulating Christ involves not only avoiding wrongdoing, but actively pursuing righteousness, actively pursuing justice, actively pursuing compassion. The challenge is to prioritize the value of God's kingdom in our daily lives, to love our neighbors, care for the marginalized, and seek justice in a world hungry for compassion. Easy to say, difficult to do. Embrace humility, prioritize the kingdom. Challenge three, let go and follow Christ wholeheartedly. The crux of the rich ruler's challenge lies in his attachment to wealth. Jesus, with piercing insight, unveils the core struggle, stating how hard it is for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God. The rich ruler, through desiring eternal life, cannot easily release his grip on his earthly treasures. To emulate Christ, we are called to let go of our attachments, 
whether they be material wealth, like the young ruler who needed that, whether it be status or personal ambitions, as long as we are good stewards, we follow him wholeheartedly. Jesus was not fussing at wealth of the day. Very important. There is nothing wrong with having material possessions as long as we are good stewards and we offer that to those who are struggling, to the church, to those in need. What Jesus was saying was this, look, following me is better than all of your riches you may have. It is the greatest treasure in the world. It is wealth beyond counting. The challenge is to surrender our lives entirely to Christ. That in letting go, in letting go, we gain something far greater. The richness of a life lived in alignment with God's purpose. As we contemplate these challenges today, let us remember that Christ does not le ne merely lay burdens upon us. He invites us into a transformative journey. These challenges today are an invitation to a life that mirrors the love, humility, and sacrificial nature of our Savior. We are entering the beautiful period that we sang this morning of the Nativity Fast, the time that we prepare for Christmas. You can see the colors are red now on the altar, on the various cloths that we use, the vestments, anticipating Christmas. We sang the beautiful hymn this morning, Christos yenate voxasat, that Christ is born, glorify him. We will bring, we begin this beautiful ascent to Christmas time, to the Nativity, when we are gathered here on the 24th and 25th and offer thanksgiving to God. We begin the ascent today, and it's important that as we begin the ascent, we do so by letting go wholeheartedly of worldly things by prioritizing the kingdom of God, and by embracing this season with humility and offering compassion on those others who are in need. Not just with our material possessions, but with our life. We are called to transform ourselves during this next 30 to 40 days. As we walk toward the nativity, as we walk to the point when we will sing the glorious nativity, when Christ is born, we glorify him, I invite you to transform yourself. Do something different this nativity season. Do something outside of the ordinary. Become a transformative person in Christ, and thus you can transform the world. If we want to transform the world, we must first transform ourselves. May the nativity of Christ always be upon us. May we look toward the nativity with anticipation, with love, with humility, so that we may embrace that time of the year with love and in Him become transformative people. May our Lord Jesus Christ bless us. May we always recognize that Christ is indeed born, and we must do our best to glorify Him always. Amen. I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly